Television has a new voice of reason with the financial wisdom of Susie Orman and the wit of Medea. How much was that purse? The purse, 600. So mm -hmm. How much money do you have in there right now? I have three credit cards. And okay, maybe... how much money do you have in the purse right now? It's an easy, simple question, Mrs. Jones. Is it zero? Yes. Okay, let me help you understand the universal purse test. If the purse costs more than the amount of money you can keep in it on a regular basis, leave it on the rack. I love this man. We're in so much debt. I've bailed him out of jail four times within the last year. How many flashlights do you owe? 50. How much did you pay on average? 200. $200 each? Yeah. For a flashlight? You're making decisions that are impacting someone else worse than they're impacting you. It pisses me off. Debtor's Court with Lynn Richardson. Ms. Sanchez. Yes, ma'am. You are bringing a debtor's court grievance against Mr. Fowler? Yes. For what looks like every financial crime known to mankind? Pretty much. Tell me what's happening. <sighs> Dr. Lynn, I need your help. I, I love this man. We're engaged. Uh, I want to be with him. I want to spend the rest of my life with him. But I'm at my wit's end. We're in so much debt and it feels like it's all falling on my shoulders. I've um, bailed him out of jail four times within the last year. Um, we've had to spend money getting his car out of impound. I've um, co-signed on loans for him to keep his car. Um, he does work and he will give me money, but it's like pulling teeth every time he gets paid. If I don't get the money right away, it's gone. I, and he has nothing to show for it or he spends it on his flashlight collection. Did you bring those? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Don't talk to him, talk to me. Okay. He has a flashlight collection, he has a knife collection, he has a lighter collection, he has a pen collection. And I feel like my son and I are the last of his priorities when it comes to finances. How did you meet? Through friends about three years ago. Well, no, we've known each other about 10 years, but we've just started dating three years ago. And three years ago. Do you live together? We, we did, but we lost the house. So now okay. we're... In, Where do you live? I live with my parents now. Okay. How old is your son? He just turned five. And I assume um, Mr. Fowler's not the father? Correct. Okay. But he's been raising him the last Understood. three years. Tell me what's going on, Mr. Fowler. Um... I don't know, I just, I'm not used to um, the lifestyle of having a kid, so I'm not used to responsibilities, really. How old are you? 30. You're 30, and you're not used to responsibilities? No. Okay. Keep going. So I just, I'm wasteful of my money and um, just buy a lot of collectibles and stuff, and I like to look good for her and stuff, so I go out and get a lot of clothes and fashion stuff, and yeah. Do you love her? Yeah. How do you show that you love her? Um, by trying to raise her son as best I can. Mm-hmm. And doing what we can together. Mm-hmm. Like going out on dinners and stuff like that. Tell me about your spending. Um, it's pretty bad. Uh, you admit it's pretty bad. Yeah. Okay, so we're times, on the same team. Other times it's not... I'm, Given her a lot of money for bills and stuff, and I don't think she realizes that. And when I give her money for rent and bills, it's just like kind of overseeing. How much money do you give her for rent and bills? Do you have a set amount every time you get paid, or do you give her whatever you think she needs? I give her whatever I think she needs. And who decides that? Mm, me. You decide what you think she needs? Yeah. Okay. Do you take a look at the budget? No. Do you look at the bank account? No. Do you open the bills when they come in the mail? No. So how do you think you have the right to tell, give her what you think she needs? Um, Admit it. You're... Wrong. Okay. We can get somewhere now. Tell me what it is you're looking to have happen today. I want him to be able to have conversations with me about money. That's the biggest thing. 
is that there's no communication. Whenever I try to bring up like a budget or you know how much uh, bills we owe and all that kind of stuff, he, he shuts me down and we can't even talk about it. And so I feel like that's where it needs to start is that he needs to be open to having a conversation about it and then sticking to a budget. And also, you know, he says he does give me money, but he, he's angry about it and, and is resentful and, and, and will make comments like, I, why can't I have the money that I made? You know, and it's like, well, I'm, I'm spending the money on you, on our bills, you know. And Tell so, me this, Mr. Fowler. Do you think she's going to do something wrong with the money? No. Do you think she's going to spend it with another guy? No. Do you think she's going to blow the money on useless things? No. Do you think she's going to blow the money on herself? No. What do you think she's going to do with the money if she actually has enough of it? Pay the bills. She's going to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. And what, what is paying the bills going to do for you? Make my credit better and my life easier. Absolutely. So tell me, do you want your credit to be better and do you want your life to be easier? Yes. Then can you cooperate? Yes. All right, tell me about these flashlights. What you got? You got flashlights. Let me tell you something. I need to see what's happening here. I need to understand why you're collecting things. Who are you going to sell them to? And who told you to do this? Um, no one told me to do it. I just kind of I go online and just see how much they're worth and stuff. So I kind of try to buy them, and then hopefully they'll be worth something in the future. In what future? Because you don't have one if you keep spending this way. There's no future for you. There's nothing, there's nothing that's going to manifest for you in terms of being able to live a happy life, a financially free life, a comfortable life where you can actually make some decisions. Show me your flashlights. Do you have any with you? Yeah. Uh, How many flashlights do you own? Around like 50. You have 50 flashlights. How <clears throat> much did you pay for them on average? Mm, 200. You pay $200 for each of them or all together? Yeah, each. $200 each? Yeah. For a flashlight? Yeah. Keep going. What else do you own? What else are you collecting? A bunch of knives. How much are you spending on the knives? <clears throat> on average, about 150. You're spending $150 on knives. How many knives do you have, Mr. Fowler? Like, probably around 30. You have about 30 knives at $150 each. Tell me what else you own, Mr. Fowler. My car. Your car. How much was your car? Uh, four grand. Four grand. What kind of car is this? Does it move? <coughs> yeah, a Mini Cooper. I'm sorry? A Mini Cooper. A Mini Cooper. Is this a collector's item as well? No. Okay, so you're just driving this. Yeah. All right. We took a title loan out on that car, too. So that. How, so you bought it for $4,000. You have a title loan out for how much? It's, the balance is like thirty one. Thirty one hundred. dollars Okay. Mm -hmm. So you owe a bunch of money on that. All right. Let me say this to you. I pulled your credit because you want to change. You know something is wrong, don't you? Yeah. You know something is really wrong, don't you? Mm-hmm. The biggest problem that I have here with this case is... You're making random decisions that are not backed by facts. Let uh -huh. me tell you something. If you want to have a peaceful life, you should accept the truth. And the truth is, math doesn't lie. Numbers uh -huh. don't lie. Yeah. If you have $100 and you want to spend $200, you are going to be in trouble. You have to make a decision to spend less money than you have. So because of the decisions that you've made, you are now in a situation where, Ms. Sanchez, your credit score is in the low 500s. It was 800 when I met him. It was 800 three years ago when you met him. How do you feel about that? Not good. You shouldn't feel good about it. And what's even worse, you haven't drug yourself down as far as you've drug her down because your credit score is 100 points higher. I'm not happy about that. I'm not happy that you're making decisions with your life that are impacting someone else worse than they're impacting you. It pisses me off, as a matter of fact. Tell me what else you're spending money on. You've got flashlights. You've got knives. What are you going to jail for? Um, well, I get profiled a lot where I'm from because uh, like I used to be involved in some bad stuff. And okay. So, so you're turning your life around? Yeah, I'm trying to. You're trying to. Yeah. Tell me, are you turning your life around or are you trying to? You're either doing it or you're not. It's like just Nike, yeah, just do it. Yeah, I have on a legal basis, yeah. Pardon me? On, le legally, yeah. Okay, so legally, 
Right. So tell me what your legal bills are. My lawyer is $500 a month. $500 a month. You still have an outstanding case against yeah. you? Okay, $500. Tell me what else. I have the checks that I've written to his attorney. Okay, so I'll my, take a look at those in just account. a moment. Give me a moment. Yeah, tell me. And then bail's bond's been, um, I don't know the exact amount, but... Are they looking for you now? No. Okay, because I was going to call him. He's right here. <laughs> Come get him today. All right. You're doing what you're supposed to do to stay out of trouble. Yeah. All right. How much is the bail bondsman debt? Around five, at least five grand. About five grand. Okay. When was the last time you purchased a flashlight or a knife? Last week. Last week. Yeah. And I'm assuming that these bills, these outstanding legal bills, took place before last week. Yeah. Let me tell you what's happening here. You're in a state of delusion. This is real life. This is real life, Mr. Fowler. And you may not be excited about responsibilities. You may not have handled responsibilities before. But the truth is, you're an adult. Yeah. And you're going to be held accountable for the decisions that you make. So you need to just get with it. You need to think about the choices that you are making. And if you don't want to be bogged down with the money, let her handle the money. She's going to do a better job than you. Don't you agree? Yeah. Well, I'm glad you agree because I am sentencing you to spenders rehab. You are going to live off of a budget. I'm looking at your income and expenses right now. And you've got about $3,000 a month in income. Is that from a paycheck, from a job, or is it from miscellaneous jobs, jobs that you're doing? It's from miscellaneous jobs that you're doing. So yeah. you get a paycheck or do you get cash? Cash. Okay, you get cash. When you get the cash, do you put the money in your bank account or do you put it in your pocket? My pocket. He doesn't okay. have a bank account, Your Honor. Pardon me? He doesn't have a bank account. You don't have a bank account. Okay, so that's the first problem. You're going to give the money to Miss Sanchez. Do you understand that? Yes. Every penny that you get. And then she's going to give you an allowance. Your allowance per month is going to be $900 for the month. Let me tell you what you got to do with that $900. You've got to put gas in your car. You've got to buy your lunch. If you can find a knife somewhere in there and you think it's still something that you need to do, fine. You can get your haircuts out of that money, but that's going to be your allowance. Everything else, everything else is going to go to Ms. Sanchez so she can take care of these bills. Now, I'm looking at your credit report, Ms. Sanchez, and I'm seeing that right now you are behind on, in Bank of America. You're behind with uh, the Syracuse credit report. You are behind with many of your bills. You've got outstanding collections and judgments against you. They're going to start taking, you, you lucky you getting cash, because if you weren't, they'd start taking your check. You're probably getting cash on purpose, so they won't take it. Do you have any children? No. Okay, so no outstanding child support against you. Okay, great. You've got to go to spending rehab, and then you've got to think about why you're making the choices that you make. Do you want to be with this woman? Yes. Okay, if you want to be with her, then make her life easier. Stop making her life so difficult. Let me tell you something. When people don't have enough money in their pocket, when they can't pay their bills, when they can't feed their children, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. And it's a problem that she doesn't have to have. And it's a problem that she can have without you. But if you're going to be here, I need you to contribute. Do you understand me? Yes. Thank you. You're going to go to Spender's Rehab. You're also going to be in debt rehabilitation. So I'm going to give you a list of all the debts that you're going to pay. And in six months, your life is going to change. Do you understand? Yes. Everything about what it is that you're doing right now is going to change. And you're going to be more powerful because you're going to have enough money to make the decisions that you want to build yourself and to build this future family with this beautiful woman. Now, let me tell you what we're going to do for you. You are getting a credit restoration order. All right? I'm going to give you some instructions. I'm going to tell you what bills to pay every month. I'm going to tell you what bills to pay off. Okay. And then the next thing that you have to do, you have to stop enabling him. The next part of your order, I'm giving you a wean and cut. Do you know what that means? Yes. Tell me what you think that means. It means that I need to learn how to start saying no to him. App, say it again. <laughs> say to... it again so they can hear you upstairs. I need to learn how to start saying no to him. Let me tell you something. No is a complete sentence. When you say no, that's it. Don't look for a response. Don't look for an explanation. Don't offer an explanation. The answer is no. Do you want me to have to help her tell you no? No. I didn't think so. All right, okay? So a wean and cut. You're going to wean off 
some of the things that you are doing to support his bad behavior. Because by enabling him, you're actually making it worse. And I know you want to make it better. And I know you love him. And I know you love her. So you need to get this thing together. Mm -hmm. Do you both understand me? Yeah. And if he does not comply with the rules, you're going to cut him off. Okay. You have six weeks. Spending rehab, debt rehabilitation, credit restoration. I'm going to put you on every order I got up here. I got so many orders up here for you. Honey, let me tell you, they're going to need a box to carry you and these orders out of here. And I want you to put those flashlights away. I don't want to see them again. And I want you to think about what you're going to do with those flashlights, who you're going to give them to, how you're going to liquidate them. Because I have a problem with you having... $15,000 in debts that she's responsible for, but you spent $14,500 on uh, flashlights and knives. That's upside down. Don't you agree? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's my ruling. Get out of here. Some cases worry me. Some couples worry me, but this is not one of those scenarios. I'm so happy they came to debtor's court. I think Ms. Sanchez needs to learn how to say no, and Mr. Fowler will flow. You see, one of the reasons why I believe he gets along so well with her son and is raising him so well is because he's just like him, a kid, and he wants to get his way. And as long as she allows him to, he will, but not on my watch, not in debtor's court. You see, I think with the spending rehab and the wean and cut order, I think their relationship and their bank account are going to survive. Court with Lynn Richardson.